So I'm Brian Heidorn. I'm the director of the School of Information at the University of Arizona. And during the last talk, I added my ORCID ID to the, my title page there. So if you want to look me up, you can. So, um, well, I should introduce the talk. So it's the Arizona Astronomical Data Hub. Um, that's recently been funded by the University of Arizona VPR, v Vice President of Research, with assistance from AAS. Um, and it is pretty much what uh, it says there on the front slide. So we want to create uh, a repository or a data hub for data first associated with Arizona. There are good political reasons why to start in Arizona if you're from Arizona. Um, but we certainly have larger ambitions. And we're interested in, not in data um, that's already um, in repositories, but rather in dark data. So that's if you search for dark data, you'll find me. I talk about dark data a lot. Um, or orphan data, the term that's being described here. Often orphan data becomes dark, meaning it's not visible. So the idea is that um, there are many large projects that have well curated data. So we don't have to worry about that. However, large amounts of data remain uncurated. I'll give some proof of that in some slides that are following. Um, where primarily, some of that is orphan data, meaning it doesn't have a home that's long lived outside of the original PI, which may have it on home servers in their department or wherever. Um, much of that data will eventually become invisible when the PI goes away. So we need long-lived long repositories for those. Also, data should be curated professionally, meaning that people that know how to do metadata and link data and use the SARI and those sorts of things should be associated with the data, although the primary author is the very best person for providing that information. Um, and it should be associated with long-lived institutions like libraries and universities and other facilities like that. So um, what I have here is a study I had done a few years ago to look at funding of projects, uh, particularly at NSF. So I was a program officer at NSF for a couple of years. So I looked at their records of funding. And uh, it turns out, well, I had theorized that there's a power law distribution of data, the size of data sets and the homes of data sets, and wanted to show some of that. Um, here, I was working in biology at the time. So the thesis is that there are some well-curated data sets that produce high-volume data. Those generally have homes. So they would be in GenBank or PDB, the protein database, or other national resources that already exist. But the question is, how much is in the tail? How much data exists in places that's not currently curated? I can say we don't have the answer for that anywhere, and, and certainly not in astronomy. But what I could do is analyze funding structure um, within a funding agency. So this is the funding structure inside of NSF uh, in 2007. Uh, the same structure holds up in 2008. Haven't looked at later data. They have adjusted some since then. But what you see is on the left, you have several very large projects, often astronomy, uh, on the left-hand side, those generally can't go through NSF without having data management plans in place for the last many decades. Those smaller projects um, don't have required, until recently, when I was at NSF and we imp implemented data management plans, didn't have to have data management plans and certainly didn't have professional curators required for their data sets. So if you look at the volume, 80% of projects funded by NSF are um, in those smaller sets without curators associated with them. So NSF, therefore, was open to losing its data that it's funding. Other agencies since then, other people have done studies showing there's very similar structure in other organizations as well, like NASA. So, um, so what we're interested in is that dark, potentially dark data. We assume there's dark data out there. That's data that we know exists but we can't actually see it anymore. Often it's invisible. Um, we had a, a study that ended last year looking at that, so Institute for Empowering Long Tail Research. So it's studying the tail, all of the, the data that might be in that tail with low funded projects that doesn't have permanent homes. I'm gonna skip through to leave time for talking and because we're a little behind. There's just a series of publications um, indicating that there should be long-term curation of data, and we don't have the infrastructure in place yet. 
For big projects, we certainly do. If you put up a telescope, you have your data plan in, in place. But data trickles out. Um, so I'll just go through those. If you want to look to them later, they'll be on the video here, and I can provide the slides. So first, um, we held a workshop last July, had uh, 28 astronomers, software developers, librarians, uh, AAS representatives, Julie in particular, uh, VPR office, and uh, people from the School of Information at the university at that workshop. And we got a series of recommendations about what we should do about dark data and astronomy or orphan, orphan data. Um, that led to a grant proposal to the VPR office uh, and AAS. Um, we created a partnership that was funded in October. No, we put it in in October. It was funded in December. So this is a very new project, uh, funded like the 20th or something of December. Um, a partnership between the School of Information, the Department of Astronomy, and Stewart Observatory. The iPlant Collaborative, people here hear of the iPlant Collaborative, Plant Science Cyber Infrastructure Center funded by NSF, a couple of people, I'll talk about it a little bit. It's now called Cyverse, it's no longer plants. Um, I was the first program officer um, when I was at NSF uh, for that. Um, the library and AAS are partners. So the broad objectives that we have, and the objectives were just adopted from the workshop, is to refine the mission science and educational use case. So we're not building a repository just to have a repository. We're building a repository to meet particular goals. Uh, we're establishing an advisory board to do that. Um, we want to do a, a new estimate of the prevalence of orphan data. Um, and I'll tell you how we're going to do that as an uh, initial step. Um, take and plant advantage of the iPlant and Cyverse uh, cyber infrastructure and the infrastructure in the library and other places to do this. Um, obtain community buy-in and manage expectations by showing up here, for example. Um, and establish both uh, short-term and long-term additional funding. This particular project goes for one year. Um, the vice president of research is not doing this only because she likes astronomy. It's because they want to generate more work and make Arizona a center for both data, cyber infrastructure, and astronomy. So particular outcomes for year one is to develop a science advisory board. Um, so it should be international science advisory board to help guide us in our mission. We don't know exactly what should be made. We should ask other people. Um, as a first objective, we're going to collect data from AAS publications over the last decade. There's 2,500 or so from University of Arizona and then others from uh, other Arizona locations. And we'll mine those to identify data sets that are orphaned, not currently in repositories somewhere else. Those might be intermittent data forms that the author considers are valuable and could be used or that publish publishers would consider as valuable. Um, and I'll talk about some more about how we're going to get at that particular set of data. And, and that, of course, is just to seed the collection. We're not going to end at, at Arizona data, but it's a good place to start to identify and identify the prevalence of orphan data. Um, so we'll need to develop a data and software catalog associated with orphan data. Adopt rather than develop metadata and data formats. There are many out there. Um, the nice thing about data standards is there's so many to choose from. Um, write our policy documents uh, for the curators and authors associated with these data sets. So we'll be going to the authors over the last decade and asking them to give us data. We'll also be, in, uh, be opportunistic uh, and work with uh, astronomers at, at the university but elsewhere that want to curate their data and start adopting some of that data into our service, including new publications. We need to set up a mechanism to adjust new, new selected data sets. Cyber, uh, iPlant works with a lot of genomics data, environmental data, so it deals with terascale and petascale data sets already. So we don't need to develop new infrastructure for doing ingest of, of relatively large data sets. Petascale, we have to plan a bit. Uh, terabytes, we don't, are not a big problem. Um, so, um, develop a discovery tool for which we might use things like Worldwide Telescope. Not all of the data will fit 
uh, an interface like WWT, but certainly that's a good partner for a large set of the data that's out there. Um, create educational materials and hold follow-on uh, data and software carpentry workshops to show people how to work within the Cyverse infrastructure and how to get their data into our set and how to get data back out again. Um, most importantly, Cyverse is not um, just a data repository, it's a processing environment. So the, it, it has its own central uh, clusters and HPC resources, but it also connects to TAC and um, much of the United States supercomputing infrastructure in a relatively seamless fashion. So you could sit your data in one place, process it on supercomputers around the country or around the world, uh, or Department of Energy and other places, without worrying about where your data actually sits. There's some layers built in to allow this, this transferability. Um, there are, so the discovery environment is a way to develop applications. We'll be doing, in the first year, porting of some astronomy applications over to the atmosphere environment to run them on the current stacks which exist in Cyverse. One of the PIs of Cyverse taught a class for us this semester, the School of Information on uh, Cyber Infrastructure, that he does every year. And fortunately, he adopted astronomy as the example. So he's gotten his feet very wet and other developers there have already gotten their feet wet in astronomical applications. Um, Atmosphere is a cloud-based science analysis platform, so you can spin off your own VMs and tie the VMs to supercomputing applications. And then, of course, very large-scale data stores. So all of that infrastructure is in place, and we're just building on that. I have three minutes. Um, we're building on that infrastructure. NSF originally funded this as a plant science cyber infrastructure center uh, about seven years ago. Um, and now NSF and the university have tasked them with becoming broader and to cover science in general. Um, so this is part of the overall Cyverse mission and NSF mission to roll this cyber infrastructure into other sciences. So the barriers, I just have a couple more slides, uh, to overcome is to reduce the pain in metadata entry. Uh, we don't want to have too much, but we want to have enough metadata to find our data and use it. Um, and also metadata to allow automatic processing and automatic visualization without humans intervening too much. Um, reduce the pain of the data formats. The scientists don't want to spend a lot of time making different data formats, transforming their data. Um, we want to discourage bad behavior by scientists. That's like hoarding their data and things like that. And of course, reward good behavior. So by, if we create computational candy, reasons people want to put their data on this site, um, then they'll be more likely to come to us and we make it very, very easy to broadly share or just share within your group your particular data set um, and we're likely to get more early adopters that way. Um, we see this as a collaborative space. Uh, Cyverse is a collaborative space more than a repository, so we called this a data hub, um, but we might decide the unfortunate acronym, ADH, we may change to some, we have word collaboration in it somehow. But we'll see how that goes um, as we broaden beyond Arizona. And I wanted to add, uh, I decided this was a good place to advertise. Um, we're hiring a tenure track faculty data scientist. Anyone out there or know a student that uh, needs a permanent position? And for this particular project, we're looking for an astronomy uh, postdoc as well. So tenure track, postdoc positions available. Links are here. You could talk to me afterwards.